on, uh, I interviewed everybody I could who uh, was involved. And you got a great doc out of it. I, a great doc. Yeah. Now, you talk about, so television, all of those things, passion. When you say heart, what, what's, you say it's got to have heart. What do you well, mean? that's, uh, that, and, and, you know, the, the phrase, it comes from the heart. And, uh, you know, if you're going to be a, a journalist, but whatever kind of journalist, print, whether you're covering dog shows or whether you're covering breaking news, so you're covering uh, the, um, the head of the Canadian government, uh, you've got to have... Uh, You've got, you've got to have your heart into it. You've got to love it. And as a matter of fact, I often say, and you've heard me say it, I've never worked a day in my life. Mm -hmm. I have never worked a day in my life. I've just enjoyed every minute. Mm -hmm. So it's a great profession. Now, what about when you worked at the gas station? When I worked in the gas station, I was glad to have that job. That was long ago, right? That was in the, just in the end of the war, 1946, 1947, 1948. But it was, uh, that was tough work. But, and my diaries, and by the way, that's another thing. If you're a journalist, keep a diary. Keep a daily diary. Memory is one thing. Diaries are another. And just this day before I came in, I came across one of my diaries uh, from 1942, 1941, 42. Mm. Fantastic. I was living in Stanford, 30, 40 miles outside of New York City. Uh, it's one of the richest um, areas in, in the entire country, it's full of wealthy homes. I worked at the gas station, lived in a rooming house, you know. I thought I'd never get out of the rooming house. One day, uh, after I'd been there about a year and a half, the owner was great. He had a, a fantastic life. He, he told me all about his life. But as, as I was pumping gas, one of the, one of the customers, after about the 30th time I'd, I'd um, cleaned his windows, said, uh, uh, what did you do before you did this? I said, you know what? I was at university, but I wanted to get into journalism. Hmm. And he got me a job. Hmm. He got me a job. So sometimes the jobs that you think go nowhere actually pay off. That's right. I think, I think Gary, you've got to have attitude, good attitude in life. You're going to tell, I've had so many false stumbles, uh, you know, the bad things I've seen in, in Vietnam and in Cambodia and all the places you never want to go back to, really. Uh, but you do. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing with the, 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 the heart of the story, what role do you think people play? Like, do you think, like, if I'm doing a story about General Motors and cars, is it more interesting to focus on the cars, or do you try to find the people angle? Right. You you always you there is no story without a, a human angle to it, and uh, so you have to stop worrying about camera angles. Uh, you have to stop worrying about lighting. All the people who work with you, which we call the crew, they're the ones who do that. Uh, I, I was one story that I was, sticks in my mind, and was probably the most frightening story of all was the. Verrazano Narrows Bridge. I got to New York, I got a job, my very first job through somebody at the gas station. And that job was to be the, um, to work for WNBC. And it was building the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. It goes straight up like that, uh, 600 feet. It connects Staten Island to Manhattan. Well, but when I went up, it was a, in those days, it was a, a five-person crew. There was a cameraman, a lighting man, a sound man, a, a gaffer, and, uh, and me. <laughs> so I said, uh, I don't need the gaffer. It was really just the union person in charge of the crew, and they all agreed on that. But then each one had to carry something. Well, finally it came to the tripod. The cameraman had the cameras, had the, the, the lighting, and so on. I had to carry this monstrous wooden tripod that weighed probably 50 pounds. You've probably seen them. I, I put it over my, sh I put the handle over my shoulder, and I gripped it like this, uh, and then I, going like this with one hand, 
I, I went up a ladder that was only 10 feet up, but I, could, I didn't want to look down. I just looked straight ahead across the sound, Long Island Sound, and I finally got to that, to the, to that landing, but then I had this 10 more steps up to the bridge itself, to the deck. So I, I still put it on my shoulder, went up, and got on the deck. And it, what a wind was blowing, Gary. It, it was, they, were threading, they were threading the floor. So it was mostly sea, that it was ocean I was looking at, Long Island Sound. So we filmed, it was all right, we filmed. We got up there, we filmed, then we got down. But of all the experiences I've had in my life, that was the one that was the most terrifying. But again, here is something to remember. You can't pick and choose if you're in, in television journalism or in journalism. You've got to go where the story is. Um, was it going down more difficult with the tripod or going up? Oh, going up. Going down was heaven. Oh, because you were... <laughs> Psychologically, it was, it was yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, that's a story that would have been a great TV story, but if that was a print story, that would not have been as interesting, would it have been? It would have been easier to get up with your pencil. Yeah, that's right. Or your Olivetta typewriter, but uh, some stories are better for TV, right? That's correct, yeah. So that was a good visual story. <laughs> that right, that's right. That's, that was a good visual story. Yeah. Now, when you t retell the story, it's quite interesting to listen to the actual words, but it'd be something to see it. Right. 600 feet up over the narrows there with, right. uh, with nothing underneath you. And I, I don't know whether we've talked about um, Indonesia yet. Have we done that? Uh, we talked, yes, not today we haven't, but no. uh, another time. But we'll, we'll pick up on that in a second. So I just want to finish up because we were talking about the, what makes good stories and good journalism. Right. And I think that's something that probably is the undercurrent for your whole life, really, is you're a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And you look for good stories. And I've sat with you many times and heard many life stories that you've re recounted to me, and uh, and all of them seem to be fascinatingly interesting. What um, of all the stories you've done? Now you, we meant we talked a little bit about Indonesia before and how you went there with that friend, that woman. Uh, I think she was an entertainment per yeah. reporter or something. Yeah. Um, was it like the, is that one that stood out to you or that that of of all many stories. Um, Cindy Adams, going with Cindy Adams, still writing for the New York Post, and must be my age, huh. which I won't reveal, <laughs> but must be, um, Cindy Adams, first, everything about the story was, uh, was you know, one of the things when you're a television producer, you've got, most of the time, everything just goes along, just normally. But then you get, a, you get a story like this. Indonesia, for one thing, is halfway around the world. Mm -hmm. For another thing, the person who brought the story to ABC News was Cindy Adams, a gossip columnist then, which is 40 years ago, and still a gossip columnist today. She came with her husband, Joey Adams, who was an entertainer yeah. and uh, the head of the union, not, not just an entertainer. So can we just stop for one second? I, I want to make sure your mic is okay. Sorry, I'm just noticing this. It got pulled down a little bit there, and I don't. I want to make sure we hear the story. Yeah, right. So the, she went with the husband, and because we, we this is a story we talked about on another disc. So I don't want to get into it too much again. Oh, okay. But maybe you can tell me in terms of we talk about the type of story. What made that a good story? Was there heart in that story, Desmond? Or was yeah, it? Well, yeah. What what made that a great story? An absolutely fantastic story is. Um, I think I did tell you, we were, we were staying in, in, in the, the place called the Mercada Square, the hotel. Right. Mercada means freedom in uh, Indonesia. Right. And freedom Square, it was, the, the whole of the world was there because Sukarno was on the verge of being overthrown and ultimately was overthrown. Mm -hmm. But at the time, he was still in the palace. Well, with the world press there, I remember very well uh, as I, we came out with the crew and Cindy Adams, the gossip columnist, but smart as a whip, uh, they said the, the big black limo was there, the windows were rolled down, we got in the car, and then I remember the, 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 the man from the London, the, London, the Times of London, he says, Cindy, 
you're not leaving now. The story's right here. And uh, she just said, bye-bye. <coughs> Excuse me. 20 minutes later, we were in the palace, the Makeda Palace, which right. is, and we was, were sitting down with Sukarno. Wow. Which is, and that's sort of funny that the uh, Gossam columnist got the big story of the day, right? Which goes to show in this business, you, ha you can't have a rigid mind. You can, surprises happen all the time. You've got to have an open mind. Now, you a long time ago told me something that news. What does news stand for, N-E-W-S? Oh, yeah, North, East, West, South. And that it speaks to the point that news is, ever, is, is everything, right? That's correct, Gary. Yeah. And of the stories that you've done, um, you've done breaking news stories, you've done, you know, Vietnam, places like that. What, what stories, the, the Indonesian one stood out to you, the, narrow, uh, the Verandero Narrows Bridge did. What are some other stories, Desmond, that you've covered over your lifetime that you think, you know, that was something that was, I was, I was in the middle of history at that point, you know, like, or this is something that'll be in history books. Well, obviously, to, um, uh, to be in Indonesia at the time, that was obviously going to be in the history books. Uh, I was in Burma when it, when it was called something else, a mother country, right? Mm -hmm. That was a dangerous, dangerous story because uh, I had to, I, the guide who I was with that was taking me to this little village, we had to slither down this, um, it wasn't a mountain, it was, it, was, it, was, it was mountainous. So it was like a, a scribble, it was like all scrabble, scribble, you know, uh, all the way down. So we go down on your, your backside, little bit sliding all the way down there. So I thought, I know we're down, I'm gonna get, get up, you know, it's just very, very tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. well, were a lot of stories like that, tough stories? Yeah, well again, in the business that we're in, it's, um, you, you, you don't get to pick, um, you know, it's not a movie. <laughs> no. now, now, how do the Canadian networks compare to the American ones? The American ones seem to have a lot more money and more resources. Is that how you describe That is correct, them? yeah. But in terms of the types of stories they're doing, is there a difference? Not at all. Not, not, a, not at all. The, Americans, the American, American news began in a kind of dilapidated way that I remember it way, way back when. It was... It was and it still is. A lot of it is still show business. It's not what we call news, right? But there's so much of, of it today. The world I grew up in, there was just one TV box, mm -hmm. and that was it, one. Today we have a universe, as you know, Gary, and as students know. It's, it, uh, does it make it easier? No, it possibly makes it harder, you know, it just makes it harder. You've just got to try harder. There's so much competition. And what would you do to try harder? What are some things that you can do that would make your story stand out from everybody else's? You mentioned heart and other things like that. Well, when you're really working on a deadline, uh, you know, you first respect deadlines, uh, and uh, you can't turn the lights out. Mm. When we leave the studio in, in, the, in the next hour, we'll turn the lights out, but in, in, in journalism, the lights never go out. Mm. Mm. What... Um Here's something for you, Desmond. If you could sum up your life in one line, what would your, what would your line be? I'd say, I've had a wonderful life. Title of a movie once. It's, a wonderful, it's been a wonderful life? Yeah. Um, and your favorite thing in life, you enjoyed your job, you enjoyed your kids, you're, you've had uh, two marriages, right? And you've had quite an adventurous life. You've traveled the world uh, many times over, I would think. Mm -hmm. um, is there places that you would like to see that you haven't seen yet? Of course, you know, you'll never, the world is such a vast place. Um, a, a place I wanted to go to, and, and, um, and I've never been, Australia. Hmm. Australia is a, a country I've, I've always wanted to go to see. I've been to Fiji, which was one of the most fascinating, uh, and, and uh, probably the longest uh, journey. Fiji's a long, long way. Yeah. Uh, but it's a wonderful country with towering forests, and um, I learned about beetle nuts. They eat beetle nuts, they crack them with their teeth. I, I uh, met the Maoris. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've just seen so, so much, which is to say again, it's a passport to the world, being a journalist. 
being a television journalist is, is one better, I'd say. Now, what about the changes in the business? You, in your days, you had five people on a crew. Right. Nowadays, they send you out by yourself with a video camera. Right. So what do you think the importance of knowing how to shoot and edit and do lighting of yourself is? Do you think that's become important? Yeah, well, obviously, if, you, if you're going to be a one-man band or a one-woman band, uh, uh, you've got to know how to handle it. But no, Gary, when I began, a, uh, a television was the size of uh, a very, very large suitcase. Today, the camera you can hold in one hand, right? The quality of that camera is 10 times or 100 times better than the cameras that I started with. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're mobile, the, ca yeah, uh, the, the camera is mobile, it's, the, camera is inex the equipment is relatively inexpensive. Uh, FPS, uh, at an all-time low currently. So there's opportunity. What if you don't sell your story? What have you lost? What have you lost? Very little. And the chances are someone, somewhere, will look at your story. Because you mentioned there's so many more channels, there's so many more places to sell your stuff. Is that correct as well? And also, Gary, that's a good point. There's uh, so many more specialized channels. I think here in Toronto, I, I think I can stop counting at 50. In them. There, I think there are many, many more uh, that you can look at. So. Uh, you, could, you can actually focus on shoes and make a story about shoes. Uh, and, uh, you know, the cost is, is, is really very little to shoot these stories. Sooner or later, if you, persistent, persistence is a quality you've got to have. You're not persistent. Don't be dismayed. Don't get downhearted.